In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a LinkedIn profile that will attract lots of recruiters, employers, or potential new clients, and help you to land your next big opportunity. As you probably know, LinkedIn is a really good platform to use if you are looking for a new job or if you're a freelancer or small business owner looking to find new clients and projects. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a good LinkedIn profile by walking you through an example profile and showing you all of the content that you need to put into each section in order to attract more viewers and encourage the right kind of people to contact you. And I'm also going to include some advice for what to do when you have little or no work experience. And before I start, I just want to give you a quick rundown of the video content so that you know exactly what I'm going to cover in each section. And of course, you can skip to any of these sections using the timestamps below if you want to. Firstly, I'm going to really quickly explain how LinkedIn works and what exactly it is that you're trying to achieve when you create a profile, because the more you understand that, the better results you will get from the platform. Then I'm going to start running through my example LinkedIn profile, starting with the photo and the headline at the top. Then we will look at the summary which is the introductory paragraph then i'll show you how to fill out the work experience section followed by the education section then we will look at adding skills to your profile which is a really really important step and finally i will talk about the benefits of getting recommendations for your profile and your skills if you're a job seeker looking for work or a small business owner or freelancer looking for clients then linkedin really has become an essential platform for you it has over 740 million users worldwide and a large proportion of those people are either recruiters or hiring managers. This means that there are potentially thousands of people within your field and your location who have the potential to hire you. And these people regularly use LinkedIn and are searching for people just like you. So when you're creating your LinkedIn profile, you're really trying to achieve two main things. Firstly, you're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to find you when they're searching for people like you. And secondly, when they do find you, you need to show them why they should hire you and encourage them to contact you. If you keep those two points in mind throughout the writing of your profile, you really will get the best results from the platform. So now that you understand the basics of how LinkedIn works, I'm going to walk you through an example profile, show you how to fill out each section in a way that will attract and impress more people. At the top of your LinkedIn profile, you have this heading box here, and this is a really important section because A, it's the first thing anybody will see when they click on your profile, and B, some of the content that you add to this section will also appear in your profile preview that gets shown in search results and in this sidebar where LinkedIn recommends other profiles for people to view. So getting this section right is really important because it will lead to more views on your profile if you get it right and it will also create a really good first impression for those people that do click on your profile. The main components of this section are your photo, your headline, your contact info, and your background photo. To edit this section or any sections of the LinkedIn profile, you just click on this pencil icon here and then make it very easy to add and update every part. To start with, you need to have a good photo of yourself because LinkedIn is considered a social platform and recruiters and hiring managers like to see who they're talking to. In your LinkedIn photo, it doesn't need to be overcomplicated, it just needs to look professional. So just wear the type of clothes that you would normally wear to your job and perhaps get a friend or family member to take a photograph of you against a plain background like a white wall in your house or something like that. It doesn't have to be a staged professional photo shoot, it just has to have your head and shoulders visible with nothing covering your face or nothing distracting going on in the background. These are a few good examples of LinkedIn photos and you can search for people in your industry if you want some examples that are specific to you. Things to avoid in your photo are things like selfies or pictures from group shops where you've cropped your head out but you've still got your friend's arm hanging into the picture or something like that. Um, those type of photos just look a little bit unprofessional and could put some people off. Your headline is this small line of text that appears underneath your name and it will also appear in your preview when you appear in search results. Although this is a very small piece of text, you need to think about the type of recruiters or employers that you're trying to attract here and what kind of terms they will be searching for because you want to be showing up in relevant searches and making sure people are clicking on your profile. Really what you want to do here is tailor this part to reflect the job or projects you're trying to get. So if you're applying for finance graduate jobs, then call yourself a finance graduate. If you're looking for retail sales jobs, then call yourself a retail sales professional. And if you don't have any work experience at all, then you can tailor this around your qualifications. So you could call yourself a school leaver with brilliant GCSE results. Now, LinkedIn will automatically update this section. If you've already written your work experience section, they will automatically insert your latest job title into this part. And that can be fine if you are already in the exact type of job that you're looking for. 
but often this section will need to be rewritten to ensure that you're attracting the right people. Your contact information here is another simple but very important part of your profile. Of course, people can contact you directly through the platform itself, but I would recommend putting your mobile phone number in here as a minimum, just in case somebody has an urgent opportunity and they're really trying to get hold of you quickly. If you don't have your mobile number there, then people in that circumstance won't be able to get hold of you quickly and you might miss out on a good opportunity every now and then. And another thing you can do at the top of your profile here is if you click on this open to button here, you can either click on finding a new job or providing services. And if you're looking for a job, you can enter details about the kinds of work you're looking for, where you're looking, etc. And if you're providing services, you can provide some information on the sort of services you provide. And all that does is it updates LinkedIn search engine. So again, they have a better understanding of what you do and they can put you in front of more of the right kind of people. The background photo is this space here and you can change it to anything you want. For most job seekers, I wouldn't worry about this section because it's not really going to affect a recruiter's decision as to whether they want to hire you or not. Uh, if you're a freelance or a small business owner, you could put your company logo up there or something similar for a more professional look. But if in doubt, just leave this section blank because it's just not going to have a huge effect on getting you hired. Once you've completed the heading, the next important part to tackle is the summary. This section is like an introductory paragraph where you sum up all of your important skills and knowledge to give readers an overview of what benefits you bring to them. It's pretty similar to the profile of your CV or resume, um, what some people might call an elevator pitch. And the idea in this section is again to think about the type of companies you're hoping to connect with and tailor this section to include the kind of things they'll be looking for. I'll put some examples up on the screen, but in general, you wanna keep this section short and sweet so that people have time to read it. And you wanna include things like industry experience, important qualifications, skills that are specific to your profession. And it's a really good idea to highlight the kind of benefits that you can deliver to companies. So maybe you can help firms to save money, maybe you can make sales or increase traffic to websites. These are the things that employers really care about so be sure to make them known. And one thing to avoid in this section is cliche phrases and buzzwords. So things like hardworking team player or strong communicator. These kind of phrases are very generic and basic. They're required for most jobs and they don't really tell recruiters or employers or clients anything specific about you. So when you're writing the profile, avoid those kind of vague terms and focus on terms that are specific to your industry and your job. The next step to fill out is the work experience section. And in the work experience section, what you're really trying to do is show uh, recruiters or potential employers or potential clients what you've done in your previous roles, the kind of skills you've applied and how that work has benefited your past employers. And for most people, what you'll need to do is list your roles in reverse chronological order, which means starting with your most recent and working back to the oldest. And the reason that we do this is because most potential employers or clients will be more interested in recent work that you've done as opposed to work that you've done five, 10, 20 years ago. If you have no experience, then you can use school work placements or volunteer work here. And if you're on the opposite end of the scale and you have years and years of experience, you don't have to include everything. You can just add your most recent and relevant work. Again, it's all about thinking what your target employers would be interested in seeing and deciding what to include based on that. For the jobs that you really want people to know about, which again will be your most recent and relevant work, I would recommend going for a structure like this to make them easy to read and ensure that busy hiring managers can quickly digest the information. Start with an overview sentence that tells readers what the employer does or what your department does if it's a well-known big company, where you sit within that organization and what the overall function of the job is. This will build a quick bit of context for readers. Then write somewhere around four to six bullet points that give detailed information on your key responsibilities within that role like who you interact with, the type of work you produce, systems you use, etc. And again, be very selective about what you include and really try to highlight the things that your target employers are looking for. And you can, of course, find this kind of information out by studying job adverts and looking on company websites. And then add some impressive achievements that you made within the role. So maybe you made a record amount of sales, maybe you introduced a new system that saved the company time and money, or maybe you did something that really helped your customers. This is another feature that's gonna really help you stand out and help employers see the benefit of hiring you. And for bonus points, try to include some numbers in these achievements to really show people the scale of the impact you made whilst you were in that job. 
As you move down the profile to older and less important roles, you can just write a short summary for each role like this one, because recruiters will tend to be less interested in work from a long time ago. They're really only interested in, as I said, the most recent and relevant work that you've done. When it comes to filling out your education, the amount of qualifications and the detail you include will really depend on what stage of your career you're at. If you've just left school, then you'll want to include your school level qualifications like GCSEs, but if you've got a degree and years of experience in your field, then you'll probably only want to include your degree. Again, have a look at adverts for the types of jobs you're interested in, find out what qualifications employers are interested in, and only include those ones. The skills and endorsements section play a big part in the LinkedIn search engine, so it's really important to get this section right if you want to show up in plenty of searches and get lots of people looking at your profile. In fact, LinkedIn actually say that if you've got five or more skills listed, you are 27 times more likely to show in searches and your profile will get 17 times more views. So it's well worth adding them. Firstly, you need to make sure that you have all of your most valuable and in-demand skills listed here. And you can have up to 50, but you don't necessarily need to add that many. You should focus on adding job-specific skills. So for example, if you're a developer, this could be things like the programming languages you use or the types of applications you build. If you're a salesperson, this could be skills like negotiation and lead generation. I wouldn't worry too much about adding soft skills like problem solving, organization, planning, etc. Because usually when a recruiter searches LinkedIn to find candidates for a job, they will search for job specific skills. So let's say a recruiter is looking for an office administrator. They are most likely to search for job specific skills like administration, office support, data entry, Microsoft Excel. They won't be searching for problem solving or team player because that sort of search could bring back almost anyone. So add your job specific skills here to make sure that you're showing up in the right searches. And the second part of this section is to get endorsements on your skills. And what this means is really that you just get other people on the platform to say, yes, I agree that this person has this particular skill. And what this does is that it shows everybody reading your profile that other people are backing up your claims, which gives you a bit more credibility. And endorsements also work as signals to the LinkedIn search engine, telling them to rank you high in search results when people search for those skills. So let's say that a recruiter searches for project management. If you had five endorsements for project management and another person had a similar profile but only had one endorsement, then you would appear above them in the search results. So each endorsement you get is gonna help you get discovered more often and get more views on your profile. So how do you get people to endorse you? Well, you can only be endorsed by people that you're connected to on LinkedIn. So the first step to getting more endorsements is to grow your network, which sounds like a bit of a cheesy phrase, but all it means essentially is growing the number of people that you're connected to on LinkedIn. Start this by really simply adding friends, colleagues, former bosses, people you've studied with, anyone that you've sort of worked with professionally. And to do this, you just click here on their profile, click connect, and it's always a good idea to write a little note in here to make it a bit more personal and friendly. And once you have a few connections on LinkedIn, there's a couple of ways you can start getting endorsements for your skills. Firstly, you can just ask people. If you've worked with somebody or studied with them and you had a good relationship, just drop them a message on LinkedIn and let them know that you're trying to improve your profile and you'd really appreciate if they could endorse some of your skills. If you message a handful of people, you're very likely to get some endorsements that way. Secondly, you can endorse other people for their skills. If you're connected with somebody and you go down to their skill section, you'll see this plus sign next to each skill. If you click that sign, it will add an endorsement from you for that particular skill. And if you endorse one of your connection skills, they will be notified. And of course, if you've done that for them, they could very well be inclined to return the favor and endorse some of your skills. And you could of course use a mixture of the two methods by endorsing people and following up with a message. But do remember to only ask for endorsements from people that you genuinely know. Messaging people that you don't know that you've never met before or spoken to is unlikely to get good results. The final step for your LinkedIn profile is recommendations. Recommendations are quite literally written recommendations that other people can write on your profile to give some really detailed public feedback on their experience of working with you. Now, of course, recommendations are quite similar to endorsements because they show any recruiters or employers who are reading your profile that other people recommend you and trust you but they're a step up from endorsements because they can provide a lot more information than endorsements can. And if a recruiter or a hiring manager sees that somebody else has taken the time to write a whole paragraph about you, it really shows them that other people have a lot of faith in your abilities and that's gonna make them much more confident about giving you a job or offering you a contract. The best people to get recommendations from are people that you've worked under in the past. So a previous boss, a previous client, 
or even perhaps a teacher or lecturer. For example, if you're a marketer and you're applying for positions with a marketing manager, then if you have a recommendation from a previous marketing manager that you've worked under on your profile, then that's gonna resonate really well with all of the marketing managers you're approaching because it's quite literally one of their peers saying, this person worked for me, they did a really good job and I'm sure they'll do a good job for you as well. To get recommendations, again, you have to ask for them by going to the recommendation section and clicking here. But recommendations are a little bit more tricky to get than endorsements because they require a lot more effort than endorsements. An endorsement will take a few clicks, whereas writing a recommendation could take somebody a fair amount of time and effort. So in turn, you'll need to put in a bit more time and effort when you ask for somebody to recommend you. Also, you shouldn't ask everyone you know like you would with endorsements. You should really narrow it down to people that you know really well and people you've worked with closely because realistically, they are the only people who can recommend you honestly. Once you've drawn up a short list of people you want to ask, take the time to write them a nice personal message and ask them if they wouldn't mind recommending you. And ideally, you should also offer something in return, like perhaps you'll buy them a coffee or offer to write them a recommendation in return. Just remember to follow up on those offers once they've written it for you to maintain good relationships with those people. That brings me to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have found it helpful, I'd be really grateful if you could hit the like button. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. So thanks again for watching and best of luck with your job search. Thank you.